How do I know if I'm exercising often enough and with enough intensity? The difference between moving and exercise would relate to the intensity and frequency by which we are moving. Meaning, if we take whatever movement we're defining and we establish a certain frequency to doing that movement and we do it at a, a particular intensity and progress that intensity, then we can label that movement as exercise. Rob actually does spinning classes several times per week um, and he also does high intensity resistance training for the upper and lower body. Uh, he gets on the treadmill and does high intensity training there. He also gets on the gauntlet or the stair machine and does high intensity aerobic training at that. And finally we do balance training with him. Basically wasn't doing any exercise till I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And then I started some light intensity here at the Y through a program they offered and then met you and ran into your stuff and so for about the past year and a half I've been doing doing this high intensity stuff. Right. So how are you feeling uh, with the program? How is it becoming? I feel better than I felt since I was 30 years old. It's great. Uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh. Great. <sighs> Another 20 seconds. Come on, stay up there. Stay up there. All right, you can sit down again. What was that intensity about out of 10? One being easy peasy, 10 being carry me off. About an eight. Okay, that's where we want to be at about an eight out of 10. If we take walking, for example, walking is a movement. It's a very common movement. It's an automatic movement. We all do it all day long. At, certain, at, a, comfortable, uh, at a comfortable level, walking would, could be considered just a movement. I mean, it is, while we do it on a regular basis, it's not at an intensity that is really stressing our cardiovascular system or our musculoskeletal system. But we can simply take walking and turn it into exercise by asking someone to walk faster, providing them with cues that will drive them to walk faster, and doing that uh, at a high enough intensity that increases their heart rate. So that perhaps they start to feel warm, they start to sweat, they have difficulty perhaps carrying, slight difficulty carrying on a conversation. Now we're starting to stress body systems like the cardiovascular and musculoskeletal system that are taking our walking from a comfortable movement level to a level of exercise. Take a long step, long step, long step. How much effort are you putting into your movement right now? A bunch. How much on a scale of one to 10? One being eight, easy peasy. Eight or, You're in eight an eight? Nine. Are you in a, at an eight? Yeah. Okay. And another thing we can do here is we can also dual task. So I'm having a conversation with him, which again makes it a little bit more challenging for his brain to maintain his balance. And keep just like, swinging. keep your arms swinging. You gotta do all those things at the same time. Now, can you, can you chew gum too? No. Okay. <laughs> for example, like strengthening exercises. You wanna start with a weight that you can lift about 10 repetitions with a certain weight, and you can do it with a fair amount of effort. But after a while, that becomes easy. And now you want to increase the weight so that you're still exercising at a level where it's challenging for you. And so if it's not challenging and it's easy, that means you need to make it harder. And so making it harder can mean adding more resistance. It can mean adding the length of time that you spend exercising. It can mean adding another day of the week to your exercise program. So there are multiple ways to go about it. And you should pick the way that you're most likely to stick to.